गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट माई सेल्फ मिली सांखला एंड इन टूडे सेशन अवर सब्जेक्ट डिजाइन ऑफ क्रिस्टल्स कॉन्क्रीट स्ट्रक्चर वी स्टार्ट विद अवर न्यू चैप्टर दैट इज शेयर एंड टॉर्शनल डिजाइन स्ट्रेंथ ओके नाउ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल स्टार्टिंग द मॉड्यूल विथ डिस्कस वट इज शेयर एंड वेन वी एनालिसिस द शेयर विच पॉइंट वी कीप इन माइंड ओके फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी डिस्कस अबाउट शेयर एंड देन वी डिस्कस अबाउट नेक्स्ट टॉपिक दैट इज अवर टॉर्शनल ओके now one by one this one shear and torsional we discuss related to prestress concrete okay now first one analysis for shear in introduction portion analysis of a reinforced concrete and prestress concrete member for shear is more difficult compared to analysis for axial and flexor in previous module we discuss about the flexor and axial but in today shear discussion is difficult compared to this both axial and flexor why it is difficult let us be uh, discuss in analysis of axial and flexor is based upon three principle first principle is equilibrium of internal and external forces second one is compatibility of strain in concrete and steel material and third one is the consecutive relationship between material okay three principle axial and flexor are based now the conventional analysis for shear is based on equilibrium of forces by simple equation compatibility of strain is not considered here okay and the consecutive relationship between material that is stress and strain of material concrete or steel are also not used that means here only and only one relation is used that is first one is equilibrium of internal and external forces okay there is no need of this second one and third one now strength of each material corresponding to ultimate strength okay and the strength of concrete under shear along based on test result is empirical in nature that means you simply we calculate the ultimate strength of material shear is depend upon the ultimate strength of material okay so we use the first relation of internal and external forces equilibrium okay now the next one shear stresses that is generate in beam we discuss about horizontal member prestress concrete horizontal member that is beam and the shear stresses that is generate in our beam is in due to bending and twisting okay and two type of shear stresses are called first one is our flexor shear stresses and second one is called torsional shear stresses okay now understand the concept of flexor shear stress what is flexor flexor means bend and shear stress that means cut the object okay now behavior of simply supported beam under uniformly distributed load without prestressing will be explained first first we discuss the simply supported beam behavior under uniformly distributed load but this beam is not subjected to prestressing force okay and effect of prestressing force will be discussed later on now first one when our simply supported beam subjected to udl load first stresses in uncracked beam okay second we find out type of cracks generate due to combination of flexor and shear then component of shear resistance and modes of failure and last we apply prestressing force and we find out effect of prestressing force this one is the step when our beam subjected to shear stress okay now now we discuss stresses in uncracked beam that means when our beam is subjected to loading the crack will be not induced in our beam okay now first of all following figures show the variation of shear and moment along the span of simply supported beam under uniformly distributed load variation of normal stress and shear stress along the depth of section of beam are shown here normal stress means that is the perpendicular of surface and shear stress that means it is parallel to the surface okay now look at this uh, b into s that means cross section of beam is given and this beam is subjected to uniformly distributed load this first figure is due to normal stress that means our bending stress and second figure is due to our shear stress okay now from neutral axis that means center of beam 
our bending stress normal stress is zero and at that time our shear stress is maximum look at this this dotted line is the neutral axis of given beam and at that time first figure is normal stress or we can say bending stress okay and neutral axis point bending stress is equal to zero and shear stress is maximum now this one is the shear force diagram when our simply supported beam subjected to uda load okay and here at center point we get maximum bending moment okay and this one is our bending moment diagram for simply supported beam subjected to udl load okay this is the all sf bm then normal stress diagram and shear stress diagram now next under the general loading the shear force and bending moment vary along the length that we already show in figure okay whenever udl is subjected and Uh, beam shear force and moment vary along the length of beam normal stress and shear stress vary along the length as well as along the depth that is clear look at this this one is the vary along the length also length of the beam and also along the depth and this sf and bm diagram is vary along the length of beam that means in shear stress and normal stress two factor are there first one is length and second one is our depth okay now combination of normal and shear stress generate two dimensional stresses filled at point and at any point of beam state two dimensional stresses can be expressed in term of principal stresses here the normal stress and shear stress discuss in two dimension and when we discuss two dimensional stresses ultimately it convert into the principal stresses okay the mohr circle is the stress is helpful to understand the state of stresses now before cracking what happen we discuss before cracking cracking stress carried by, by by steel is negligible okay that means steel is not carry any type of stress first of all concrete is carry the stress when principal tensile stress exit the cracking stress the concrete crack and there is a redistribution of stresses between concrete and steel for point on neutral axis element 1 the shear stress is maximum okay and the normal stress is zero and principal tensile stress that is sigma 1 is inclined at 45 degree to the neutral axis this one is the condition of after cracking okay before cracking there is no relation okay but after cracking principal tensile stress sigma 1 is making 45 degree angle with neutral axis and the following figure show the state in plane stresses now we study the condition of cracking look look at this in first that is the state of pure stress okay look at this this all stresses are given a shear stresses parallel to the surface okay and this we discuss for element 1 okay after in first state here the normal stress look at this here the shear stress is maximum okay in this element 1 shear stress is maximum and the normal stress is zero okay now next when crack is happen in this element 1 at that time look at this this dotted line is our neutral axis and sigma 1 normal stress sigma 1 induced after cracking okay and this sigma 1 making angle 45 degree with this neutral axis okay and after cracking principal stresses shear stresses induce in element 1 and this one is the representation of mohr circle in mohr circle sigma 1 and sigma 2 are the principal stresses and this v is our shear stresses okay now angle between this principal stress and this v is 2 alpha that means 90 degree because alpha we take as 45 degree that means angle between this two stresses is 90 degree now clear now we discuss about element 2 okay at the level of neutral axis normal stress is zero and shear stress is maximum for element 1 in element at the level is under pure shear okay because here the normal shear stress is zero that means this is the simply case of pure shear now state of pure shear can be conceived as a state of biaxial tensile compressive stresses okay now principal stress are inclined at 45 degree with respect to axis of beam that means our neural axis of beam 
it is necessary to study the principal stresses to understand the cracking of concrete mohar circle is a representation of state in plane stresses on surface of various inclination passing through a point okay now shear force is maximum near the support and crack due to shear occur near the support now we discuss about the different type of crack that induce in our beam first of all the crack are induced at support okay and this cracks is known as a shear cracks crack are formed around the neural axis and perpendicular to the principal tensile stresses sigma 1 crack are thus inclined at 45 degree to axis of beam the following sketches are inclination of crack forming in neutral axis now according to this figure we understand the criteria of cracking of beam okay again in element 1 it's subject to, to pure shear okay when this beam element 1 is subject to, to pure shear and when concrete is crack okay first of all the shear cracks are developed at the support okay and here is the figure when our element 1 is subjected to principal stresses okay sigma 1 and this sigma 1 is making angle 45 degree with neutral axis and again these shear cracks are formed near the support okay now for point near the bottom edge of beam now we discuss the element 2 okay now in element 2 normal shear stress is maximum the stress criteria will be changed here in first case shear stress is maximum and normal stress is zero now we understand the concept when normal stress is maximum okay and the shear stress close to zero the principal tensile stress sigma 1 is almost parallel to the bottom edge and angle of inclination sigma 1 with respect to axis of beam is alpha and it's much smaller than 45 degree the following figure so the state in plane stresses okay now we understand the figure for element 2 look at this this one is the shear stress and normal stress okay here element 2 is subjected to maximum normal stress and the shear stress is zero because it is balance now when it is deformed okay at that time the principal stress make angle less than 45 degree with neutral axis in first case angle make alpha is equal to 45 degree when our shear stress is maximum but in second case when our normal stress is maximum this principal stress is make angle 40 less than 45 degree and this one is the representation of mohr circle for shear stress and normal stress okay here the bottom edge the tensile stress due to flexor is maximum and shear stress is zero state of stress is nearly uniaxial in first case stress is biaxial now here element 2 the stress is uniaxial tensile stress is the principal compressive stress is, is negligible okay and mohr circle is shifted toward the axis of principal tensile stresses okay this one is the stress condition for element 2 now the concept can be used to develop the principal trajectories the following figure show the trajectories for simply supported beam under the uniformly distributed load and crack pattern can be predicted from this trajectories okay now look at this this one is the simply supported beam and this central line is our neutral axis and this is the angle 90 degree okay that means we discuss for element 1 here the 90 degree means shear stress is maximum and normal stress is zero an angle formed that is 90 degree and with respect to this neutral axis the trajectories are formed this one is the principal trajectories okay and according to this we discuss the failure criteria of simply supported beam when it is subjected to udl type of loading okay uh, now we stop here and in next session we discuss with another topic okay just now we stop